why people do not make consistent progress in their lives. I wrote here lack of goals and defined expectations. The first reason that I've pointed here as to why many people, including believers, do not make constructive progress with their lives is because of the lack of goals and defined expectations. Proverbs 23 and verse 18. Lack of goals and defined expectations. The Bible says, for surely there is an end and thine expectation, if at all you have any, it shall not be cut off. But if you do not have an expectation, then there is nothing for God to fulfill in your life. Many believers do not have goals and do not have defined expectations. Now, please look at me. Life is like a marketplace or a shopping mall. Only one who desires to waste his time will enter into a large shopping mall or a very big open market as we do in Africa and keep roaming around hoping that as he or she is roaming around they will later on think of what to buy usually especially for women what they do is they settle down and make a list at home am I right a list of what to buy now it can be adjusted when you get to the mall but nobody leaves his home expecting to be efficient and then gets to a mall and keep staring at things, staring at whatever it is, you will be distracted, you will waste your time, you will not even make the most efficient use of the resources you have, especially when it is limited. Are we together? Yes. So most people do not know that destiny and life is like a marketplace. They have no list of defined expectations. They wake up in the morning, they sleep late in the night. If they are fortunate to encounter a visionary person that day, he can give them some sense of direction with their lives. If otherwise, they continue in confusion and inefficiency. Reason number one, why many people, including believers, including church people, do not make constructive progress in their lives is because they lack goals and they lack defined expectations. You must have clear and defined expectations. What was your plan and agreement with God for 2024? All right, let's assume that you did not plan. Now you are in September. Do you know from October, November, December, in three months, you can do much with God, greater than someone has done in five years. Sometimes we ask people to write prayer requests like this, not just because of it, it's a ritual. It is to help you fulfill this. That in sitting down to write a prayer request, it demands that you think. The Bible says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. That means there is intelligence to prayer. Hallelujah. Lack of goals. There are families with no goals. There are individuals with no goals. There are businesses with no goals. They just exist and they tell you, we just want to make money. Anytime you do not have a goal and a defined expectation, anything that comes to you would be your lot in life. Are we together now? As a ministry, we have goals, impact goals. We have the things that we are trusting God for. There is a, an assignment that stretches the lifetime of this ministry, but it is broken into yearly goals broken into seasonal goals, broken into all kinds of goals. But many, many people do not have defined expectations. Perhaps you came here because you were invited by some good fellow, you were invited by a believer somewhere, and you have come and honestly, between you and God, and in the name of honesty, you don't even know what you expect God to do. Do you know there are times that people come for prayer and when I'm about to pray for them, I tell them, okay, what do I pray for you for? They say, honest, anything. And I'm saying, my God, can you imagine anything? You know how many things there are to pray for you over? Most people do not have expectations. Blind Bartimeo cried. And when he got the attention of Jesus, you thought Jesus would immediately lay his hands on his eyes. He came to blind Bartimeo and said, what should I do for you? And the man went straight. It means he had rehearsed it a number of times. If I ever meet Jesus, I will meet him twice to be healed. Immediately, he had premeditated on that expectation that I may receive my sight. It's as simple as that. 
There are people who are here tonight and they are going to be walking away healed because they meditated on this miracle service since yesterday. My problem is kidney issue. My problem is that I have cancer and I am dying. This is my singular. They come with a heart of focus. Their worship is directed there. Their amen is directed there. There's no wasting time. For someone I'm here trusting God for scholarship, for my education. I'm the only one God is lifting. And so they are attentive to their word. Expectation creates focus. You know when your word comes. Hallelujah. It is the reason why many people come to church and honestly, they return back just nodding and you ask them, so what did you receive? They say, ah, God moved, oh, okay. Moved upon who? They say, I, just, I really enjoyed myself. This is a good church. I will come again. What did you get? What was your expectation? The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, for without faith, are we still here? It is impossible to please him. For he, anyone that cometh to God, you must believe that number one, he exists, and then number two, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Acts chapter 3, at Get Beautiful, Peter and John he told them, Look on us, told the man at Get Beautiful, Look on us. And the Bible says in verse 5 or 4 that the man fastened his eyes on them, expecting. To receive something expecting to receive something expecting to receive something do you expect to receive tonight do you expect to be healed tonight do you expect to receive an impartation maybe a man of god you came here tonight struggling ministry is clearly not working and you just said well let me visit uh, this koinonia thing I'm, I'm no don't waste your time like that you come with hunger there are possibilities in the kingdom. Now I'm within an atmosphere that makes that my reality. Father, my heart is opened. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, there is what you must tell yourself and there is what you will tell God. Did you hear what I said? There is what in receiving, there is what you must tell yourself and there is what you tell God. She said to herself, if I may but touch the helm of his garment, I will be made whole and as soon as Jesus was passing while others were robbing him maybe others were trying to reach to his pocket to remove money the woman slipped her hand with expectation the difference between her touch and every other kind of touch was one was a touch of expectation and Jesus said who touched me the disciples said no 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 don't don't be silly there are so many people touching you he said no the, a woman had touched me because I perceive that virtue had gone out of me. Expectations. So if you are here whilst you are listening to me right now, whether you are in any of the overflows outside Zaria, connecting across the globe, make sure that you have a defined expectation. Don't just join the crowd and say, we came for a great program. No, have an expectation. Father, this is what I'm trusting. I'm not working. My husband is not working. Our children are not going to school. Lord, visit us. We need Ebenezer to visit us tonight. This shame and reproach, let it be rolled away from my life. Hallelujah. Someone say in Jesus' name. One more time, shout it. Say in Jesus' name. I come before the Lord with an expectation. Yes, sir. Number two, the second reason why people do not make progress in life and destiny is because of wrong limiting belief systems. Wrong limiting belief systems. I have taught extensively in this house that what you believe determines the reality that you walk in. It is true. Wrong or limiting belief systems. We have coined those belief systems with all kinds of sayings. All kinds of sayings. Maybe sociologically acceptable, but they are scripturally wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, when someone fails, the first thing he can say is, who have I troubled that all this trouble is coming upon me? It may not always be trouble. I've told you that demonic interferences are not the only limitations to the lives of people. Let me tell you the truth. If Satan is bound today physically, 
kept in a location and every demon is bound kept in a location many will still fail that is when they will know that satan is not entirely responsible for you have a will and your will can determine whether you succeed or fail in genesis 11 the holy spirit was not mentioned satan was not mentioned angels were not mentioned demons were not mentioned yet there was success and there was failure hallelujah in genesis chapter 1 there was no generational causes there was no no family ties there was no whatever genesis chapter 1 adam did not come with any generational cause he didn't come with any limitation yet he still succeeded and he still failed so if you are blaming the devil for all your problems you will be learning tonight that your orientation is wrong that in itself is a limiting belief system are we together poor or limiting beliefs many people have very poor beliefs i'll give you an instance there are people today who believe that their success is tied at the hand of one uncle or one father or one mother and would not take responsibility over their lives we continue to pray that god helps our government and all who are in power to keep doing the best that they do to make this nation better but there are many young people who just fold their arms and then just cheaply blame any other thing and any other person aside themselves there are people it doesn't matter who comes they will never rise because intrinsically they are defeated from their mind i taught you in koinonia here that everything in destiny is built twice it is first built in your mind before it is built physically if you build anything once you will lose it the building that comes in your mind is more stable and superior to the one that is physical. Because if that one is destroyed and the one in your mind is not destroyed, you will rebuild it again. There are people who lost money. They only lost physical money. In their minds, they were still wealthy. They got back their wealth with time. Are we together now? You must cry for a very superior mindset. How about the popular African proverb, one day go better. Huh. no I've taught you that time does not change anything waiting for time to change things is a total waste of time you invest in time and you command your own possibility by engaging the world through obedience just sitting down idly and saying one day you will see you are laughing at me today tomorrow you will see that statement is only right if you are doing something if you fold your arms and just allow life to be you will grow old having that same experience recycled are we together Amen. so you must make up your mind that everything wrong with my belief system that is in partnership with Satan I have taught you in this house and let me repeat it again that your mindset is your contribution to your failure or to your success if you didn't write it the last time now write that your mindset your belief system is the contribution you bring to your failure or your success if you fail in life even if it is a demonic thing, your, your mindset partnered with those spirits to have brought that, that woe to a reality in your life. Your mindset is your contribution to your failure or to your success in life. Anyone here who is a victim of negative programming, poor or destructive thinking that is keeping you limited, keeping you unspiritual keeping you poor keeping you lazy in the name of jesus the son of the living god here at this miracle service tonight may your deliverance begin i said may your deliverance begin spirituality is a mindset spiritual laziness is a mindset carnality is a mindset poverty is a mindset Prosperity is a mindset. Leadership is a mindset. A beggarly life is a mindset. Mediocrity is a mindset. Giving up is a mindset. Endurance is a mindset. Consistency is a mindset. Number three. What is the third reason why many people are stunted stagnated limited and even frustrated in life in addition to lack of goals and defined expectations in addition to a wrong limiting belief system number three and i want to stay a bit here 
lack of value and resourcefulness lack of value and resourcefulness lack of value and resourcefulness hmm. you are as relevant to anyone as the value you bring to them you are as relevant to anyone as the value you bring to them you are as relevant not in life to anyone as the value you bring to them let me tell you sincerely believers and i want you to listen to me especially because of the reality of the times that we live in economically and otherwise our world today runs on a value reward system value dash reward system our world today does not run on sentiments it runs on a value reward system say that after me please value reward system one more time value reward system that's how our world runs today so if there is no reward coming to you what you need to check is your value and your resourcefulness you are as relevant to anyone as the value that you bring to them listen as a believer you must seek to be valuable to everyone because we have a mandate to reach people as a believer you must seek to be valuable to everyone but from a reward standpoint you must focus on being valuable to those who need you and have the capacity to reward you let me take that again as a believer because we have a mandate to reach all nations at least with the gospel i hope you know what value is value simply means your contribution the solutions that you provide for people the level of your usefulness to an individual a nation an organization is a measure of your value the measure of your usefulness to a person is your value to that person now let me give you an instance let's say a husband and a wife a husband can talk to his wife so nicely and say you are the best woman in the world you are a wonderful woman I thank God for the gift of you she is valuable to him and yet his neighbor can hate her and resent her are we together now because she is not a wife to every man she's a wife to her husband so the man is celebrating her based on the value she's bringing to him and you will be surprised that on one hand her husband is celebrating her yet everywhere else people hate her because she if she wants their celebration she must provide value to them if the only if the value she's providing for her husband is what she wants other people to clap for she'll be wasting her time who is learning there are many many people whose value you want people to keep clapping for you and to keep rewarding you over value you are not bringing to their lives just because you brought a value to your company it is your company that will reward you if you want a reward from me you must bring value to me to me many people say i am valuable i don't doubt that but are you valuable to the person who has capacity to reward you listen to this and be delivered there are many people flattering themselves i am valuable for instance i am a graduate wonderful for instance i have a master's i have a phd i respect your sacrifice i am valuable because i've been an apprentice under someone but the question is that if you want rewards from me are you valuable to me are we learning now so you find a lot of people who have capacity and are frustrated because the people who have the wherewithal to reward them do not need what they are bringing if i do not need what you are bringing listen carefully if i do not need what you are bringing no matter how valuable you believe you are with respect to being rewarded from me you will not be rewarded are we together so for instance you find a young graduate angry and saying can you imagine after spending five years six years seven years pro strike doing a postgraduate doing whatever it is i am here now no job no situation i i understand and i truly sympathize but you see those who have the resources may not need what you are carrying may honestly not even need what you read 
Your own assignment now is to reinvent yourself to communicate the value that can be rewarded. Else you will remain angry even though you are supposedly gifted. If you can sing and you come to my house and what I want is total silence with respect to my desire and what I want to reward, no matter how glorious your singing is, you will not be rewarded by me. So there are two ways God helps you. Either you change your value to what I can reward or God changes your audience to the person who has a recognition for what you carry. And tonight, may God do both for someone. Are we learning? Many believers are not valuable and resourceful to those. Please hear me. Understand this. You may be valuable and resourceful, but are you valuable and resourceful to those who have the capacity to reward you? Hallelujah. Many believers want to be blessed, but they do not take the time to find out who really has the capacity to reward me and what is that person looking for? Are we together? So you can be praying right now, for instance, let me use myself. You're praying and say, oh God, I want Joshua Selman to give me 10 Naira. You see, let me tell you why it's a selfish prayer. Because you are not saying, oh God, grant me the grace. Whatever Joshua Selman can spend 10 Naira for, grant me the grace to provide it. You see that now? And if you provide it once and provide it twice, then you will continue providing it. And for as long as you provide it, you will keep getting my 10 Naira. If you provide for 100 people like me, you will get 100 Naira from us. And for every one of us you provide value for, we have a circle of influence. We can bring that circle to your space too. Are we together now? Many believers are not valuable, I'm telling you to those who have what it takes to reward them. The first thing is that they dishonor those who have the capacity to reward. If I am thirsty and you bring a plate of food, I tell you that a plate of food is wonderful, but as far as my need is concerned, what I need is water. Whoever has water will command my attention. Now, is food wrong? No. Are we together? You will have to go and find someone else who is hungry, so hungry that he wants to eat the swallow or whatever you've prepared. But if you keep following me and say, you must eat this food, you're a wicked man. You must eat this food. And I'm saying, I'm choking. I need water. And then someone somewhere says, look, I have water. My attention will go to the area of my need. Everybody who has the capacity to reward has a need too. Every man's need is his point of contact. Every man's need is his point of contact. I have taught you in this house and let me use the opportunity to press it. Don't harass any wealthy man you know. Trust God for grace that what they are willing to invest their energy, their time and their resources on, that you will be part of those who provide that value to them. That is how to get into their space. There are two ways I taught you to step into the realm of greatness. Number one is through the door of need. The other is through the door of value. If you step into the life of great people through the door of need, you will be a slave when you get there because you will be at the mercy of everybody you find there. But when you step into the door of value, even the great will recognize you because you came in through the door of value. So you find a lot of people saying, I know this person, Senator so, so, so and so. I know this man, I know this CEO. In fact, I know them. Look at my picture. Look at my picture. You keep showing the photos of several people. The reason why they don't remember you is because you are not contributing any value to them. Are we learning? This is powerful. Very powerful. As a man of God, you must be able to defend why you think God will bring multitudes to you. No sentiments. It is spiritual, but it is still value. If the people come to sit down, tens of thousands of people and others connect across the globe to listen to you, the question is, what spiritual value are you bringing? 
if they invest three hours of their time their destiny will they live transformed will they live saved will they live healed these people have serious concerns in their lives and if they shelve their businesses they shelve their trips they shelve whatever there are people who have traveled from all over the world the question is that what incentive what are you told them to come now they are here what value are you bringing if you waste their time there's no reason why they will come back again so it is your assignment therefore if you really want God to trust you with people the secret is not to call them the secret is to stay Lord what do these people want and the Lord will tell you many of them have problems financial problems family problems attacks and then you say Lord the revelation and the anointing to solve this problem let that be my cry for their sake now God who gave you the grace knows how to direct those who need you are we together now and then when they come you are to keep that revelation and to keep that fire ever fresh it was God's servant Bishop Oedipo who said God gave him as a formula he said feed the people let the sheep come and find green pasture let it be ever fresh and they come and they lie down in green pasture there's one thing I know about humans nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works you left iPhone lower version because a higher version came for as long as that lower version was there you held on to it your first phone was a 3310 you didn't throw it but you don't know where it is now because other versions came and so if as an individual you remain a 3310 you will be in a world that does not need you you go to the west there used to be this play that children play they say I pass here no way I pass here no way I pass here there are many of you this is how life has been you come with arrogance I pass here they say as what what are you contributing no way till now you've been hearing no way may it change this night I say to you may it change this night that God will place grace upon your life that in one week you will solve the problem of kings they will say you are the one we've been looking for now listen under this category there are two sets of people and i want you to listen number one there are those who are honestly valuable your value is such that kings need you but by demonic manipulation or just by happenstance those who need what you carry have not yet found you this is the power of prophecy to connect you to the audience that desperately needs what you carry who is hearing this tonight do you know I have met people in my life and upon meeting them I was almost saying where have you been because I've been looking for you ladies and gentlemen what you are looking for is also looking for you the assignment of demonic spirits is to keep that separation as wide as possible there are some of you right now there are CEOs praying for you your qualification is what they are looking for your character is what they are looking for your intelligence is what they are looking for you will even define your own salary by yourself but if you find them and you can spend the rest of your life and not find them I'm telling you the rest of your life hallelujah I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart whoever needs you and has been praying about you and doesn't know it is you he's praying for as you have come here tonight by the spirit of prophecy I declare a supernatural connection yeah. hallelujah true story a man that I know very great man highly intelligent for some reason that man seemed to be by some sentiments the man was thrown out of his organization I know him because I prayed for him and something happened recently he prayed this prayer you see and an international organization somewhere I think they were looking for someone to direct a, an institution and do you know they just one thing led to the other one discussion led to the other they made calls to the high and mighty in Nigeria and just to know that this man's qualification was what they were desperately looking for exactly what they were looking for in one moment they called him what do you need 
Is it a house? Is it a vehicle? Forget about whatever. And this, this man suddenly became a king overnight. If you don't find those who need you, you will be despised. Even if you are valuable, it is a terrible thing to be in the presence of people who do not have an appreciation for the investment of God on your life. They will despise you. I've shared with you here how a woman who has PhD was, you know, opening and closing gates in an oil and gas company. PhD. Now, I'm not insulting that work. You get what I'm saying? But I'm saying for that level of investment, you have to make do with anything that is available. Again, I pray for you, Koinonia, from the depth of my heart, whether it's a ministerial grace you carry, whether it's a business grace you carry, whether it's years of intellectual sacrifice, everybody who needs you and can reward you as touching what you carry, this week, in the name of Jesus, may they find you. May they find you. May they find you. May they find you. In Abuja, may they find you. In Lagos, may they find you in Nigeria may they find you across Africa may they find you hallelujah one of my precious ladies she just departed I think it was yesterday out of this nation I met with her sometime in Lagos she used to be you know a worker here and she met me very lovely brilliant lady and she said so 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 company abroad I mean a very big company had called her to come and walk and they put everything in place and I looked at her and smiled and said, you said this thing. I said, absolutely. The day those who you are sent to find you, that is the day you become a king in experience. There are many aparakatos I tell you, I sense a strong anointing as I'm saying this because many of you, it's not that your family is that weak. It's not that there's no good thing that can come from your family. But by demonic orchestrations, you are gifted people, beautiful ladies, intellectual people. But there is a covering cast on that family. Nobody is able to rise. And even where you are gifted, the devil will close the eyes of anybody who can bless you. I pray for you again. May you find those helpers of destiny. I know very great men of God who love God, character, integrity, but they have not found people who have placed honor on their grace. I know many women, captains of industry, if you sit down and talk with them for 10 minutes, you will be saying, why has Nigeria not identified this person? Why has the United Nations, AU, why have they not identified this? You, you have no idea how many people are looking for you. How many people are praying for you? But this is what demons do. Paul said, I desire to come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. I pray for you. Any hindrance that is stopping your visibility. That those who have what it takes to reward you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that hindrance is scattered now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. True story. I know a very wealthy family who were trusting God for someone to take care of, I think their grandmother or so. And then one thing led to the other. They found this supposed young lady from the village and they brought the lady to stay with them, not knowing that prophecy had come that God will raise a helper to that family. That's how that girl came into that family. And because of the kindness of the family, they took the lady as their own. They began to help this lady from secondary school to university, took them as their physical daughter. The lady started bearing the son name of the man. This is how God changed their life. Do you think that lady will marry a foolish man under that watch? No. There are certain miseries in the life of people. It's not a capacity issue. It's that those who carry those who need and can reward what you carry. I tell you sincerely, even as a man of God today, to God be the glory. The blessing of God upon my life in ministry is that he has taken my voice to those who need what he has placed upon my life. That is a secret to honor. I know many business people 
who there are people who have invested their 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 minds to get knowledge but the organizations and the institutions that can reward them they are not even in this country but the devil will make it look that they, they will never see them there will be testimonies from this miracle service some of you whilst you are sitting by the spirit of grace someone will talk to somebody about you someone will talk to someone about your daughter about your son about your husband about your wife i prophesy it upon you in the name of jesus please sit down there was a man in the bible who had capacity to reorder the administrative system of egypt but that man was in a prison he was interpreting dreams but he was in the prison and the only reason why he was in the prison was because the king had not heard about him and the man he now pleaded with he said go and tell the king i have this ability i'm innocent i don't even want greatness i just want freedom i was accused wrongly and i'm here the bible says when god wanted to help that man called joseph the king slept and had a dream that no one else could interpret i'm saying this as a prophecy for someone there's and there's something god has placed on your head that none of your siblings carry there are many people in your organization but there are things only you can do i'm praying for you what makes you unique may god make men see it what makes you outstanding may god make men see it what makes you exceptional may god make men of capacity see it hear me related to value let me remind you it matters who sees you when mean people see you not an insult they cannot reward you when god wants to fast track a man's growth hear me especially economically god brings people of capacity to see you because only kings can give you a king's reward the wine presser cannot bring you out of prison the baker cannot bring you out of prison only pharaoh can bring you out of prison are we together now you are joseph but you have been serving pharaoh you have been serving the wine presser you have been serving the baker it's time for pharaoh to hear about you it's time for pharaoh to know that you can interpret dreams and you can bring economic solutions again i pray for someone who came for koinonia for a miracle service the pharaoh that has been assigned to identify your value may they hear about you from tonight may they hear about you from tonight hallelujah I remember I may not mention names but the first ministry many years ago that heard about me and what God was doing in my life until then there were ministries here and there within our local environment and of course everybody was rewarding based on their perception this young man that God is using now but I remember a ministry somewhere in the south south far south south it was through the pastor's son I think and then it got to the wife and when the wife listened to my audios, it, I mean the impartation and the encounter. That woman's life changed. The husband had to say, we have to look for this man. Where is he? They said, Zaria. Say, Zaria? What sort of, what is this man doing in Zaria? I remember when they were preparing to bring me. It was the first time in my life as a man of God that I was receiving any kind of commendable honor on account of what I carried. Even me, I was surprised from that meeting what I carried. Right from the airport, they were waiting for me. As against you standing and waiting and say, I'm here, oh. You said I will preach. They said, no, it's not today. Go back, maybe come back tomorrow. It's a terrible thing to be gifted. And yet you are in the presence of those who have no recognition. Again, don't be tired of receiving this. May God change your audience. Change your audience. Change your audience. Until you are in the presence of those who can reward you. Koinonia, may God change your audience, change your audience, change your audience in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. There are furniture people today who should be making chairs for palaces. But they are there. There are tailors today who with the kind of value they carry, I'm telling you sincerely, they should not be begging for bread. But a wrong audience. A wrong audience. There are men and women of God today with grace. You don't do ministry for money. However, you can be rewarded as you serve God. Are we together? There are enough people who love you to reward you out of poverty. There are enough people who love you to reward you out of mediocrity. The assignment of the spirit of grace is to gather them like a magnet and bring them within your space. Until they come within your vicinity, even Jesus, although he was the savior of the world, nobody followed him till a voice said, Hear ye him as the savior with capacity to save the world. Only God knows how many great men have been despised because you were surrounded in the company of mediocres who have no respect for your sacrifice. How many of you know that once upon a time, a little village girl called Hadassah, that lady had within her destiny to be the queen. I can imagine Esther in the village just saying, but God, these dreams you are showing me that one day I will be queen. She would not even tell anybody around. They will say, you, a village girl, you think the king is that stupid? Ah, but when the time came, after he drove Vashti, he said, gather to me the virgins. And one by one, from the back, by the spirit of grace, God kept bringing her forward. The Bible says when she, the king saw her, Esther chapter 2 and verse 17. When the king saw her, the Bible says she found favor. The king loved Esther. There are many people who have been managing mediocres because they don't know you are there. The day you show up, they will reorder the administration of that company until you find a place. I hope you believe what you are hearing. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. Ah. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory. of a life of shame my glory the lifter up of my head before I continue wherever you are just take one minute to pray it's time for my value to find visibility it's time for what I carry to be seen and heard come on now someone pray man of God I like you to pray it's time for the investment of the spirit upon your life to be seen it's time for your gifting to be seen it's time for your sacrifice to be seen go ahead and pray 
Outside pray, Zaria pray, Canada pray, US pray, UK pray. Eleke bereke te barantos koto bregetech. Me barantos koto brente ke peleke barantos. Shifting in the spirit, shifting in the spirit, shifting in the spirit. I sense in my heart that for many people, this is one of the reasons why you came tonight. Your issue is not laziness, your issue is not lack of value, your issue is not lack of resourcefulness. In all honesty, you are not lazy, you have taken the time to invest. Spiritually, intellectually. Halakaparatusia. Oh, someone is about to be seen. Someone is about to be seen. Ah, ya kaparakatabareta. Someone is about to be seen. I speak to you by the voice of prophecy. Someone is about to be noticed. Someone is about to be seen. A man of God is about to be handpicked and honored globally. Honored globally. Honored globally. A woman, a businesswoman is about to be seen. Your products like wildfire going across the globe. Please be seated. Why do people remain stunted in life and destiny? They lack vision. They lack plans, goals, and defined expectations. They have wrong limiting belief systems. They lack value and resourcefulness. Number four, they lack wisdom. I like you to be very sensitive. I tell you, fire is falling in this place. Falling in this place. Falling in this place. You have been praying this for a long time. God, locate me. Help me. There, there, there is a helper who needs me. Where are they? I don't have the power to find them. Based on my background, I don't have the power to apakato seketa. I don't have the power to find them. I'm prophesying to you. You may not have the power to find them, but in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I come in the spirit of Samuel, that missing donkey that is causing you restlessness. May it get back home. 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 In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Number four, lack of wisdom. Lack of wisdom. And hear me, when it has to do with destiny actualization, now wisdom is fivefold in its operation. There are five dimensions of wisdom according to the book of Proverbs. And all of these dimensions of wisdom have mighty works that they command. There are two of these dimensions that are important for destiny actualization. They are all departments, subsets of wisdom. Number one is called divine direction. Number two is called divine strategies. These are expressions of wisdom as far as destiny actualization is concerned. 
Isaiah 30 and verse 21. Let's hurry up. Lack of wisdom. Many remain stunted in life because their ears have not heard a word behind them saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right and to the left. If you lack divine direction, you are as limited as the direction that comes to your life or otherwise. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I want us to shout this scripture. Are you ready? One, two, go. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide you. Do you know what that means? I will guide you with revelation. I will use revelation to guide you into seasons. I will instruct you. I will teach you the way that you should go. God, should I pursue or should I overtake? This is one of the blessings of prayer. You see, one of the ways that we access wisdom, you have been taught here, is through meditation. Meditation on scripture and then quiet contemplation. The psalmist will usually say, Sila, pause and think. Wisdom is mindset activated. You need to use your mind. Wisdom is a function of deep contemplation. Hallelujah. Most people do not think. They waste the investment of wisdom in their lives. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen, to the degree to which you access divine direction and the degree to which you access divine strategies, that is the degree to which you make advancement. Psalm 104, verse 24. We have to hurry up. Psalm 104, verse 24. The Lord orchestrated this solemn assembly tonight to change someone's life. It says, O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. Then it says, In wisdom thou hast made them all. In wisdom, in wisdom. Everywhere you see mighty works. In ministry, in an organization, wisdom is behind it. Wisdom is, is responsible for building anything noble. Anything that has durability has wisdom as its foundation. Anything that has durability, sustainability, spiritually, intellectually, organizationally, when you see longevity, ever increasing consistency, it was built on wisdom. Hallelujah. Finances that was built on wisdom will not go up and down. It goes up and stays up. A family built on wisdom will not go up and down. Doesn't mean there will not be challenges, but it will stay up. A ministry that is built on wisdom will stay up. A spiritual life built on wisdom will stay up. You need to cry for the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Now listen, I said this under point four, that visions and goals are at the mercy of the strategies that power them. Visions and goals are at the mercy of the strategies that power them. Visions and goals are at the mercy of the strategy that power them. It is important to have visions. It is important to have goals. But they are as potent as the strategies that power them. Many of us have great visions and great goals that we have penned down. We've written them for years. They have refused to come to life because there was no strategy if you want to bring down jericho that is a goal but what is the strategy if you want to walk upon water or move to the other side that is a goal what is the strategy if you want to feed five thousand people that is vision but what is the strategy because you only have five loaf and two fish many of us lack divine strategy the truth is you know what to do but you do not know how to do it to prosper. Apostle, I have this desire to float a restaurant. Great vision. There are enough people who are hungry to prosper you. But if you fail, it is a strategy. Are we together? Yeah. What is the difference between an industrial mechanized farmer farming acres of land with predictable results and someone in the village? Strategy. They all have vision to farm. It is on the same land. And one person is laboring endlessly with wounds over himself, his wife and the children. Spending a whole day and they cannot even 
plow an acre of land but someone else with predefined technology and all kinds of technologies in 21 days they can grow vegetables 21 days they can literally with with godlike prophetic precision they can tell you how many tons of corn or rice they can get from this acre of land the difference is strategy not vision many of us need wisdom we need divine strategy god has told you what to do don't run till he tells you how you will do it did you hear what i said if the only thing you receive is vision or prophecy you are still in trouble you will fail like it's not god that told you god told you to go and marry wonderful ask him how will i have a hitch free marry with joy don't just run and then crash land and be saying this thing self mm -mm. strategy god told you to go and do business don't just get up and run people have failed woefully lord what is the strategy moses went back to god and said lord what do i do now he said you have a rod in your hand remember i trained you with that rod tell the people that they go forward then stretch forth your rod and part the sea and yet the bible tells us in the book of psalms that it was by the breath of his nostril that means he was there backing the strategy for someone you came for koinonia tonight the truth is that what is wrong with you is not confusion by the message of god you already have direction what you need is strategy god has told you it's time for your company to go all over nigeria but how do you do it how do you circumvent the sentiments and all the prejudices that come territorial biases strategy what makes any ministry any business global it's not just the anointing it's not just the mandate the strategy if you do not have the strategy you will remain small because you can have 5,000 people aside women and children and yet what God will give you is five loaves and two fish and while you are there angry saying God are you blind there was something you were supposed to do with the five loaf and two fish and it will feed everyone God's servant Bishop Oedeko will say what you have is enough if you know what to do with it what you have is enough if you know what to do with it. There are people who use two million naira and started building. And because of strategy, they built in such a way that after they finished, if they told you that house was 80 million naira, you will believe. It was about strategy. Sometimes it's not always about more resources. It's about strategy. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Rest on me. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. When you truly access wisdom, and one other two com twin component called favor, I'll talk about that shortly. But if you access wisdom, there will be no need to go through the burden of living a fake life. Let me tell you this, and I say this with every sense of honor. One of the things that I learned as I moved into this city. I was surprised at how people inconvenience themselves to live a fake life. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the burden of living a fake life is like slavery. You've heard me, why fake what can be real? Are we together? There are many people whose trouble today is not demonic. It's an ego problem. You know ego is an industry people have built businesses around ego a fake life it is totally unnecessary if you eat tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow i guarantee you if you wear tomorrow's cloth today you will be naked tomorrow and it's better to be naked today and then be clothed tomorrow than to now have clothes today Many of us, our problem, even the attacks that came on our life is because we sold a fake life and someone begged you because of their perception that you were a millionaire. 
and because you refused to give, not because you were greedy, you didn't have it, the person said you will see, and you see, you are seeing now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Run away, honestly speaking, from the pressure of living a fake life. Access wisdom. The house you are not prepared for, leave it alone. Go and start small. The car you are not prepared for, leave it alone and start small. Hello? The restaurant you are not prepared for, leave it alone and start small. It's nobody's business that you are growing with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Are we together now? Don't ever be ashamed of integrity. Oh, someone says we have one, um, one gathering and everybody's bringing one, one million. Oh, I appreciate you. What a great gathering. But um, as it is right now, based on my plan, I don't think it's, it's a wise thing um, to put that. I've been listening to Joshua Selman and, and part of what... Blame it on me so that you can rest. Because if you tell them no, you'll be in trouble. So blame it on me. Are we together? Don't carry one million, whereas what you have in your account is five million. And then you carry one million. You will not know his waste. The prodigal son never knew how bad things were depleting. When he got to half his worth, he didn't know until everything dried up and then he was feeding with the pigs. Access wisdom. Wisdom will tell you leave many layers lower than your true worth until you grow. That anything you cannot do twice or three times, you are not yet there. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Don't buy an SUV and then you'll be using black market to put the foil there. You are not there. I'm not insulting you. Please, don't feel bad. You are not there, my brother. Are we together? Very foolish things believers do and put themselves in trouble. No. Must you hold the meeting in your house? Oh, Apostle, we have Bible study in various houses. If your house does not have the capacity, just tell them, please, I'm not, I'm not, the way with that at this point, I may not be able to host all of us. I hope you're not offended. Let's move to the house of the next person. The day you move honorably to a house with a good parlor, you can invite them. You borrow a house, you borrow everything, borrow whatever, and then let me charge you. This social media deception, let me say it again. There are healthy aspects to social media, but many people's trouble started the day they bought a good phone. Because they went on social media and saw people selling lies, selling falsehood. Did you hear what I'm saying? Selling lies and falsehood. And then the person just puts to God be the glory and then you get intimidated. This person who used to be my classmate in primary school, He's now doing this. He's flying a private jet. He's driving a Mercedes Benz. No, I give myself one month. That's how people get into armed robbery. To move honorably or to end up in prison, which one is better? I leave it to you. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me don't organize anything beyond your capacity if god gives you an instruction bigger than you before you execute it seek help from veterans so that they help you interpret what he has said don't put yourself in trouble let me tell you this progress is important but peace is by far better than progress it is better to be perceived as going through delay, but you can sleep soundly, than to be given an impression that you are doing well, and then you live on many drugs, and you still will not be able to sleep. Hallelujah. If you have a friend who is always intimidating you, leave the person. Did you hear what I said? Deliberately making you feel bad. Um, just to let you know, this watch, I bargained it. They said it was... Um, 300,000. I beat it down to 280. Why are you telling? Why is he telling you? When he knows that you have been asking for rent. Love him, but please let him go away. You don't have to fight. Look for visionary people. Oh, you mean you have 10 million naira and you are this modest? Yes, I'm building because I'm the firstborn of eight children. 
and I want a situation where if I rise, everybody through me can eat. So I will run away from a fake life. And God says, that's right. You are being word compliant. Destiny helper, here is a person you should lift. This is how it works. In the name of Jesus, the pressure to live a fake life, may it depart from you this night. May it depart from you this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't borrow money you don't have and be in trouble you cannot sleep because everybody loan apps are looking for you everyone is looking for you no you know almost every day I get text messages from I don't know how they do those things oh I'm, I'm almost every day they are saying so 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 and so is uh, I think maybe he has not paid the money make sure you I mean, you know one you know every day how they got my number I don't know at the point I said, is it that these guys are scammers? What? Every day. Is it that they submitted my name as a guarantor? What, what, what is it? Say amen. amen. If you are owing, make sure you lift your hands when I'm praying. So that you, you come out. Yes, I'm no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not. This is a miracle service so that you come out and rest and rest come on to me jesus said all ye that are weary and heavy laden what did he say he will give you i will give you rest yes sir let's finish number five why are many believers unable to make progress lack of favor with men i wouldn't say much there this is a house of favor any serious person who has been in this house has understood the dynamics of favor. Men willing to help you. Men willing to stand by you. Men willing to support you. Men willing to carry you until you win. Are we together now? You are as prosperous as the men who believe you. You are as prosperous as the men willing to invest their credibility, invest their resources. When you have the twin combo of wisdom and favor, you become unbeatable. In addition to wisdom, press for favor. Let me run number six. Why is it that many people do not make progress in life? Listen to this. Lack of health and physical fitness. The absence of health and physical fitness. Psalm 104, 14 and 15. The absence of health and physical fitness, physical vitality. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth good food out of the earth verse 15 and wine that makes glad the heart of man and oil to make his face shine and bread which strengtheneth the man's heart this is god's commitment to your health and vitality that he causes the cattle whose meat you will eat. He is the one that causes the grass to come out. Are we together? He makes sure that everything is in place for your health. This is why many came here tonight. That every attack on your health is not about your body. It's about your destiny. And when it's time to pray for the sick, make sure your heart is open to receive. Don't pamper any situation. Reject it. If it has to do with its capacity to impede your progress, it is demonic. Mysterious headache. It just started, you thought you were tired. But then month one, month two, month three, it just kept coming. If you keep quiet, I have taught you here, Satan proceeds further. Ah, what's this mysterious pain around my back? Ah, next week again, ah, pain around my back. In two weeks, you are not able to sleep on one side. By the next week, you are feeling numbness. Go to the hospital and do your due diligence. But just know that Satan is attacking you. And if you don't fight back the fight of faith, you will see the devil cripple you. How you know many sicknesses are demonic is because they are defying the predictions that doctors have given as to when they should start. Doctors would say when you are approach 50, 60, maybe 70, there are certain things that 
based on medicine may not be unusual weakness of the joints etc memory loss but if you see a 21 year old person having weakness of the joints having all these things immediately it tells you it is satanic that's why we are here i believe in the god that heals and i pray for someone who came today weak in the name of jesus in a few minutes from now you will wave those sicknesses goodbye forever you will wave those sicknesses goodbye forever listen you need physical health and vitality you need physical health and vitality if you are to accomplish destiny if you are to serve the purposes of the kingdom if you are to live a victorious life you need physical health and vitality and whilst you are seated here many of us right now have right before our faces life-threatening medical reports i'm not against medicine we have a brilliant team of doctors that make up our medical team and shortly they are going to be walking when I start praying for the sick verifying miracles and things that God is doing but let me tell you this you have to believe God for your health and vitality Satan you will not pack up my kidneys no no organ failure no not in my lifetime do you believe that By the message of God and by reason of what I do, I've been around many, many sick people. And sometimes you see conditions that are heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. I have seen children under certain conditions, you know this is satanic. The kind of injection that they give these babies, this is their first experience with the earth. Injections upon injections and you're saying, what, what is this? It couldn't have been God. Hallelujah. You wake up one morning, all of a sudden your hands cannot move again. And in many regards, it's not carelessness. Some of us, every time we celebrate birthdays, our hearts start palpitating. When you clock 40, you are afraid. 42, you are afraid. 44, you are afraid. No. With all due respect, maybe there are ladies now. You are already being afraid because, of course, medicine has said what you said. After you pass a certain age, listen, let me tell you this. I don't insult medicine, but your realities are defined by your faith. Did you hear what I said? Your realities are defined by your faith. My Bible says, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Lack of health and physical fitness has caused a lot of trouble. When you travel particularly to the West, there seems to be a growing campaign of darkness over a generation causing mental health. Children from 13, maybe fair enough 13, down to zero. And, and I know there are many people watching right now. Perhaps some persons came here to receive a miracle child attended to sincerely and then he begins to grow losing consciousness losing speech let me tell you the truth it is an attack from hell the devil wants to paralyze a, an entire generation so that a time will come where parents cannot have young people they can look up to as their children but in the name of jesus we have come tonight to say satan you are a liar Amen. hallelujah Number seven, and this is where we'll end tonight. The seventh reason why people do not make progress in life, I summarize it as spiritual issues. Spiritual issues. That includes demonic attacks. That includes all kinds of satanic covenants and yokes. Spiritual issues. I have dealt with intellectual issues. I have done, dealt with physical issues. But let me tell you the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Koinonia, you have seen this and you are about to see this shortly again. That Satan does attack men, including the saints. He attacks with trouble. He attacks with conditions. He attacks with sickness. He attacks with diseases. He attacks with all kinds of inconveniences. Men can be under curses. 
Men can be under yokes. Men can be victims of evil speakings. Men can be victims of covenants. Is liberty a reality in Christ? Yes, it is. But not under every condition. Conditions such as this. Listen to my message, Complete Deliverance. I teach there on the steps for accessing complete deliverance. I've been a victim of demonic attacks. I know that Satan attacks men. And let me tell you, the realm of the spirit does not care whether you are a preacher, does not care whether you are an apostle, you are a prophet. Once that light and that grace has not been there to bail you, you will be a victim. But hallelujah, you came for this miracle service. Because in the, new, the next few minutes, we are going to lift a banner as we pray and cry to God to visit you. I have listed seven reasons. For some of us here, as you came here, your report is zero over seven. You've not excelled in any one of these areas. I do not condemn you. You can start afresh. I will recap it again and then we'll pray. And then I'm going to minister deliverance to the oppressed. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking open doors to those who are bound. I'm going to be praying for the sick. The next few minutes will demand very keen spiritual sensitivity. You're going to insist on God tonight until you walk away victorious. Hallelujah. Spiritual issues. I've encountered demons. I've encountered angels. I've had the honor of seeing Jesus. I've not seen Satan, but I've seen demons. I don't even want to see him. He's a wicked spirit. Hallelujah. He has caused mayhem and trouble to many. I have seen oppression firsthand. I have seen the elderly cry. I have seen children cry. I've seen educated people cry. I have seen strong men cry because of attacks. I've seen people move from Grace to grass, sometimes overnight, overnight, like Job, overnight, everything just went like that. But tonight God is giving you an opportunity because the spirit is about to be poured upon us from on high so that the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field, Isaiah 32, 15, and a fruitful field be counted for a forest. Hallelujah. You believe this? And I'm saying this to you so that you don't allow any doubt in your heart. What is your assignment tonight as we prepare to pray? Find out what is missing or wanting based on this list. I will run it again and that will be your prayer. That will be your cry for tonight. Number one, for someone it is lack of goals and defined expectations. For another person, it is that you have wrong limiting beliefs. This is what you came to correct. For another person, it's lack of value and resourcefulness, quite honestly. For another person, it's lack of wisdom. You are panting for divine direction, panting for divine strategies. For someone, it is lack of favor with men. Your life has been marred by misfortune and bad luck. You've not had it funny. You've not had it favorable with men. For someone, it is lack of health. Many, I believe. Lack of health and physical fitness. You have the intellectual power, but the health that backs your mind to help you achieve much is not there. And finally, for many, I believe, who are here tonight, and the many who are following online, you have come trusting God to bring an end to spiritual issues, satanic molestations that have tied you, tied your family, tied your destiny. God has given you hints in types and shadows, in dreams and prophecies. You've seen it through the word, but whilst you are growing, you may not have the capacity to help yourself for now. And so he's brought you that by mercy, we can offer that assistance. My job is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to offer you maximum assistance as far as your liberty and your victory is concerned. Yours is to believe in Jesus, believe in his vessel, and believe in what God is able to do. Can we pray a few prayers? Please rise up on your feet. Yahweh, Rafa, Elohim, 
Shaddai Jireh Adonai Manifest yourself Yahweh Rafa Time with faith in your heart. destiny must make progress from this from this meeting from tonight from this encounter go ahead and pray. mention the areas that must change come on someone is praying father grace to have a vision for my life to have goals for my days Oh yes, you are praying. You are praying. I obtain grace to correct limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. I obtain grace to invest in value. Invest in value. To be resourceful. Spiritually resourceful. Intellectually resourceful. Someone cry for wisdom, cry for divine direction, cry for wisdom, cry for divine direction, cry for divine strategies. For another, pray for favor, favor for a sick person who came here downcast, ill in your body. I like you to pray that I must receive my miracle tonight. The program of God depends on my participation. My destiny depends on my vitality. No room for sickness. No room for diseases. Finally, I'd like you to pray. Every demonic blockade, every hindrance to my moving forward, to my going forward, to my making progress, to my advancement, to my prosperity, to my increase, I come against you. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Matthew chapter 4, please, from verse 25 to 27. Matthew 4 25 and there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan next verse and seeing the multitude the Bible says he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came to him no 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 we're reading something else help us you've made a mistake Matthew chapter 4 25 is it 25 to 27 did i get that right give us jeremiah 30 and verse 17. jeremiah 30 and verse 17. want to pray for the sick now and to pray deliverance one to go for i will restore health unto you and i will heal thee of thy wounds saith the lord because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah 33 and verse 6, please. Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. One to go, please. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them 
abundance of peace and truth. Why do we minister deliverance? The reason is because Satan curses, yokes, ill speakings, foundational realities do exist. The house of God, an apostolic and prophetic platform like this, is like a hospital. You treat all kinds of patients. There are patients who don't need surgery. All they need is to just prescribe the tabs and then they can go. There are other patients who are even medical practitioners themselves. You just give them the recommendation, they go home, they can give themselves the injection. There are patients in ICU. They were brought wheel because they were about dying. They need delicate attention. There are others who are infants. They cannot speak by themselves. You need to help them. There are those who are too old and frustrated. You will need someone to guide and help them. There have been patients in the hospital for three years. They have been treated, but it will take a time, some time. Multiple surgeries. You would have to do the first set, allow them to heal after one month, then do another. The goal is to get them whole. This is how it is with the many who have come here tonight. Various spiritual issues. For others, you don't have any spiritual problem. What you just need is wisdom and impartation. For others, you have a serious spiritual problem. We need to dig into these foundations and deal with it seriously. For others, what you need is an impartation of grace. It doesn't matter what you came from. This, by the grace of God, according to scripture, is called a general assembly. Like you have a general hospital that has all kinds of departments and colleges there. And so God is going to be attending to various people. And I want you to receive from your, for yourself and then believe God for another person. Are you ready now? And then for those who are falling online, please don't get too familiar with what God is doing. I'd like you to open up yourself and to receive. Mention the one area you want God to touch now. If it's your body, please mention it. If it's that there is a demonic thing, you know that there is some satanic thing around your life and family that needs to end. Don't be silent. Go ahead. Let's have this one minute to pray and cry out our heart. And then we experience the ministry of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm receiving a very strange instruction by the Spirit. Please, everybody sit down. Usually, we will stand. But I'm going to minister this deliverance with people seated. Hmm. Why? I don't know. Obedience is how it happens. I'm going to ask you now, as I pray, to bring all those under the anointing out. We're going to be seated. But you see... There are people here who are under all kinds of influences of spirits, demonic spirits. In this auditorium, across the balcony, all the overflows to the basement, outside, Zaria, those connected across all our expressions. I'm about to pray for you right now. The purpose of the prayer is to activate the power of God towards your direction. And I want you to believe that as God's power comes towards your direction, that everything that is not of God, it gives way now. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people have come tonight to encounter your power. I decree and I declare. Please, ushers, I'll ask you to bring them out very quickly so that we'll rush. I want to take some time to pray for the sick. In the name that is above all names, anyone here and any family here represented under the influence of spirits, under the influence of curses under the influence of yokes as you shout the name jesus right where you are seated in the name of jesus let that light and fire that comes from the throne let it begin to dispel every demonic work are you ready now at the count of three one two three shout jesus bring them out in the name of jesus I curse those spirits by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every molestation, every curse that followed you here, every covenant that followed you here to destroy you, to frustrate you, 
I say it again, it comes under arrest. One more time, shout Jesus. Spirits of delay, delaying destinies, delaying women, delaying men, I arrest you now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Release them now. Release your apakatosh ketebedeketa. Release your destinies now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Every family here that does not rise, it looks like when you are about to rise, there are forces that sit on your destiny. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon Let it come upon you now. Let charms and altars be destroyed now. Let evil speakings, incantations of witchcraft against your life, against your marriage, against your family, let it be destroyed now. Bring them out. The Lord is telling me to speak to someone that the attack on your life is because you are the deliverer of your family. The attack on your life is not because of something you did wrong. It's because the devil has seen that the hand of God is coming upon you. That you are the one God is raising. I curse that spirit. Release them now. I curse that spirit. Release them now. I curse that spirit. Release them now. In the name of Jesus. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory. for those outside I'm praying for everyone but I want to pray for those outside those outside I want to pray for you there will be a mighty deliverance outside don't worry every overflow everywhere you can participate but outside those outside you are going to shout the name Jesus at the count of three and I'm seeing fire falling outside there are ordinances of darkness some of them hundred years old fifty years old it was not your great grandparents came into it they met it there those outside you are going to shout the name jesus and the lord is going to be destroying the works of satan are you ready now at the count of three shout jesus one two three shout jesus broken 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 by the power of the holy spirit every altar tying down anyone outside from the front to the back the left to the right in the name of Jesus I curse it now I curse it now bring them out in the name of Jesus be released now be released now you're my glory the lifter up of my head hallelujah the Lord is showing me a vision. Please listen. And I see this many times. I'm seeing a human being, but I'm seeing like the head is tied, like with a veil. And the Bible says, listen, there are many things that are in the head. The hair, which is your glory, is in the head. The eye, which gives you direction, is in the head. 
your sense of perception is in the head your mouth that you speak and eat for nourishment is in the head so when the head is covered it's not just the head it's a revelation of the many aspects that are wrong in your life this is not for everybody but i want to pray for that person that every veil that has tied down your life and covered your glory I tear that veil now. 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 now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to speak to a gentleman here. I may not be able to speak to many people. Our time is gone. But no one has risen in your family. But the Lord is saying I should tell you that you are going to be called into ministry. And it is that platform that God will use to deliver your family. It will not just happen by business. Ministry. Actual fivefold ministry. There is a grace, that's why God brought you here, to contact the anointing that will release you into a fearful dimension of the ministry. I don't know where you are, but I pray for you, for the sake of your family. Let that grace fall on you now. Let the fire fall, let the river flow. Let it burn inside, let it flow outside, let the fire fall, let the river flow, let it burn inside and flow outside. Let the fire fall, let the fire fall, let the river flow. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the name Yenagoa. 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 I don't know who is from there. That should be what state now? Huh? By Elsa. Yenagoa. Is there someone like that? You are from that place. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing there is a strong impartation that God is bringing. You are from Yenagoa. Who is that person? I want to pray. You are stepping into a season. Let them come. You are from there, my dear? Come. Careful. Let the fire fall. Ah, someone's life is about to change. You see, let me tell you something with prophecy. Honestly, when God locates you back, just know that your problem has come to an end. Yenagoa. Please make sure, okay, there are protocol there. That's, that's. Please bring them, okay, well, I would just, can you bring them to the front here? There's still space so that they don't, um, Yanagoa, I will pray for you. Why God calls the names of states and regions, it's a miracle, it's supernatural. But I'm about to pray because I'm seeing an altar from Yanagoa that has tied down many people, they can't rise. It doesn't matter where they travel to. They still remain on the ground. But in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Hence God has located you this night. I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every covenant and every altar. Tying your destiny. Those of you in front here. Be released now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, every enchantment, every divination, every witchcraft that has tied you down from Yenagoa, I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Stopping marriages, I release you now. Stopping fruitfulness, I release you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. If there is anything you have seen as a pattern 
you saw it in the life of your parents now it's manifesting in your life and you're a child of god poverty failure hardship they go up and go down as i'm praying for them i'm praying for you any pattern around your life you are seeing a repetition of somebody's life it's as if you are living someone else's life i break it now 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 I'm seeing someone's hand. I don't know if it's in front here or you know how visions are. But I'm seeing someone's hand held like this. And all I'm seeing is a padlock in between. One locked to another. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. I don't know whose hand has been tied. It may be a career person. It may be a business person. You came for Koinonia tonight. Every spell that has tied your hand so that you will not rise in career. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. Please return to your seats rejoicing. The Lord is showing me a man of God. You don't have to come out. You are in the overflow down, not outside, down. You came and sat quietly. Your prayer has been for ministry to work. You love Jesus sincerely. But this land has been harsh for you. The gates of ministry have not opened. I pray for you right where you are. In the name that is above all names. I use that man as a point of contact to every man of God here. You love the Lord with all your heart. But it's like the gates of ministry have refused to open. In the name of Jesus. By reason of this impartation tonight. I declare the gates of favor open now. Open now. Open now. Please lay your hands. Now hear me. If you came with someone who is sick and cannot help themselves, then please know that you are here to help them. Are we together? Whether the person is deaf or blind or crippled, once they are not able to help themselves, when I say lay your hands, if there's someone, maybe a child or an old person or someone on a stretcher or wheelchair, you can agree for the person. I want to pray for the sick now. I hate sickness with a passion. I've seen it destroy people. Please place your hand, believing. Even if it's headache, don't spare. Lay your hands there. Don't tolerate anything. Cancer, fibroid, HIV, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, growths, appendicitis bone conditions heart you know problems liver you heard the testimony of the lady they kept treating something else whereas her liver had been punctured satan for you some of you quite honestly you don't even know the name of what is wrong with you you just know that you've swallowed everything that can be swallowed joint pain all kinds of things do you know, I once ministered to a lady. It was at that point I really respected the realm of the spirit. True story. Her biological husband had passed on in glory. And a spirit came to her to molest her in the night. And this woman got pregnant physically. Ah, I've seen things in this ministry. Pregnant physically. And it's not maybe as much as she told me. Satan for you. Lay your hands. I want to pray. A lump, shoulder pain. If you are standing for someone, that's all right. Some of you, especially if what is wrong with you is also wrong with everybody in your family, what you need is not healing. What you need is to be delivered. It's a pattern. It's beyond a condition. Hepatitis spread through. Headache spread through. Maybe some... Um, cardiovascular problem respiratory problem sinuses all kinds of things I want to pray for you I believe in the power of God 
Yesu may rama chia tu wata banda wani se Yesu may rama gawae na banda wani se Father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now over your people if you have any blood disease please come out blood disease blood disease I'm I'm not any if it is related to your blood blood come out medically verified I just sense in my heart as the Lord is directing me I'm still praying for the sick Alina sovre simelento sala cruz que veritu si bahashia I'm not careless at laying hands uh uh I understand the implication of laying hands but the Lord is asking me to lay hands on you I'm going to do this very fast you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you now Elena mo sabra kadesh I'm still praying for everybody anyone here under the sound of my voice who is suffering from cancer liver cancer prostate leukemia blood cancer you don't have to come out please make sure you don't come out at random just those who have verified blood diseases Oh, this spirit must leave you tonight. Must leave you tonight. The life of the flesh is in the blood. In the name of Jesus, anyone here who came with cancer, don't worry, those who are in front, you just be listening. I will lay hands on you, but let me pray. Anyone who came with cancer, any kind of cancer, in the name of Jesus, whatever empowers those cells to multiply, I command that they die now. Cancerous cells die now. Cancerous cells die now. Let me pray for everyone here. You came here and you are not able to walk whether by wheelchair, whether by a crutch in the name of Jesus wherever you are. Whether you are inside, whether you are outside, whether your photo is here or you are connecting from any hospital. I decree and declare now let the power of God surge through your body receive life now receive life now receive life now in the name of Jesus now anyone who has growth in any area of your body growth whether a lump some growth around your abdominal region I'm praying for you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you be healed now. Amen. Shout a loud amen. Be healed now. Amen. The Lord wants to deliver someone. We don't have the time. You don't have to come out, but listen. When you were small, now I'm not saying your parents are bad people. I'm sure they would have repented. They took you somewhere and they made some incisions, physical incisions on your body and put certain things there it was supposed to be for protection this is what god is showing me this thing has become a it has tied your destiny down that no matter where you go the lord is saying i should set you free by the power of the holy spirit those marks are still there physically now that you are an adult i decree and declare whatever was programmed into your destiny by witchcraft through those incisions i set you free now Help them please. Help that lady at the back. I set you free now. Shali marunta sevrege di malakosia. Eye problem. Anyone having a problem with your eye by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare be healed now. 
deaf ears be open now there's someone here I don't know if you are here or you are following but I'm seeing uh, an individual they wore you a catheter they wore you a catheter from the hospital because you have you have a problem I think most like with your, your kidneys or something you are not able to pass out urine not normally they wore you a catheter whether you are here or you're in any of the overflows or following online in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God heal you now Amen. joint pains be healed now Amen. bone conditions be healed now Amen. you're not able to stand for long be healed now Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. now I'm going to give everyone five minutes you're going to pray in the spirit while you receive everything healing for whatever it is that is ailing you I have to do this because the Lord instructed that I do I'm going to be laying hands on you those who have please no one else comes it doesn't matter what the condition is um, I'm going to do that very fast I usually would not do this because we a miracle services require like six seven eight hours if you are to do justice to people's problems so God will grant us grace hallelujah praise the name of the Lord those of you who are here please listen to me for God to have insisted that I lay my hands on you it means he really wants some things to come to an end no matter what it is as I lay my hands on you you return to your seat as much as you can we will do that very fast while everybody is praying you are releasing your faith in the name of Jesus Christ first I pray for you every spirit that is back of anyone's condition here in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit those spirits let you go now let you go now in the name of Jesus worship give us something while I pray for these people very quickly
and every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome, you overcome, say Just place your hand there. Any organ failure, heart problem, any of your organs in the name that is above all names, kidneys, liver, heart, brain, nervous system, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare life to that organ now 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 there's a gentleman called Suleiman Suleiman I'm hearing a name Suleiman 
the Lord is bringing a mighty miracle to your family. This is not, this is not healing. Your name is Suleiman. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is bringing a miracle to a Suleiman. Suleiman. The Lord is bringing a supernatural miracle to that gentleman. You are Suleiman. Where are you from? Augustessa. I want to pray for you. Your real name is Suleiman. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you as God has revealed. May he turn your family around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I'm praying for you still. Someone is having a severe back pain. Pain at the back. In the name that is above all names. Be healed now. Now whether I mention your case or not. I'm praying for you. Please hear me. Some of you. You may have something that is eating you slowly and you do not even know. I'm just having this by the ministration of the Spirit. You just know you are losing weight or something is happening. You are not normal, but you've not been able to detect exactly what is wrong. No matter what the name is, we declare that that condition dies this night. And for anyone here who is standing in for a loved one, you're placing your hand, you're lifting your hand, but it's really not for yourself. Or it's for yourself and a loved one somewhere. Wherever that loved one is, whether they are connecting from a hospital or they are here. Right now in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare be healed now. Return with your testimonies. Receive your healing now. Healing from blood conditions healing from neurological conditions respiratory conditions reproductory conditions in the name of jesus christ you have any loved one who is mad maybe some gentleman roaming around the street or anyone suffering anything that has to do with their coordination whether autism some mental health case in the name of jesus i bring healing for that person now for someone your problem may not be mental health but you are thoroughly depressed did you know it was not it was not um not too long ago i got to understand that depression was even a medical condition i used to think it's just a state of sadness where you are terribly sad but i didn't know that it can actually be diagnosed in a hospital that they can say you are depressed i pray for you whoever is having suicidal thoughts hearing voices telling you to kill yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit be set free now Amen. did you bring your prayer requests please everyone bring your prayer requests out pass it to the last person at the left or right aisle I want you I'm going to be giving you some prayer points to pray while you are doing this and we have to work with the time that we have left there is a heavy impartation that is about to come upon your life now You are going to be praying father establish and preserve my testimony establish and preserve my testimony everything good everything god everything victory are you praying don't be distracted please establish and preserve my testimony someone is praying outside pray Zaria pray everywhere overflows make sure you are praying establish and preserve my testimony you are alpha please be omega establish and preserve my testimony establish it that everything that makes for joy everything that makes for gladness everything that makes for rejoicing everything that makes for celebration who is praying everything that makes for victory Lord in this season I desire to see it establish your name upon my life establish your victory upon my life whilst you are praying submit your prayer request for some is in the area of marriage establish and preserve your testimony others in the area of fruitfulness establish and preserve your testimony my testimony others in the area of a job i'm going to be speaking over your life but here is where you pray now don't be careless make sure you pray establish preserve the testimony in my business 
Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Someone pray. Visit my family. Establish and preserve my testimony. You have given me honor. Establish and preserve it. You have given me victory. Establish and preserve it. You've given me influence. Establish and preserve it. You've given me a new, a good name. Establish and preserve it. Someone is praying. God answers prayer. You have given me a good husband. Establish and preserve him. You have given me a good wife. Establish and preserve her. You have given me children. Establish and preserve them. Go ahead. That after you have suffered for a while, that the Lord will bless, He will establish, He will preserve, He will settle you. You have brought me into the wealthy place. Establish and preserve my finances. You have appointed honor to my family. Establish and preserve it. In Jesus name I pray. We are still praying. We are going to pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Open your mouth and pray. Lord enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my influence. Give me greater testimonies. It is not carnal to ask God for more. Establish my business. Broaden my, the, my hands as far as my reach towards finances is concerned. You work in an organization. It is okay to pray that God promotes you. When he promotes you, he promotes his name through you. He promotes his name. He promotes his agenda through you. Preserve your name. Establish me. Settle me. Shabalaka parata kata franda kabela nakapa. Krapata parato shoto pragata belagatesh. Whilst you're submitting your request, make sure you pray. This is part of the service. Pray. Pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. Someone is going to cry. Lord, give me peace. Give me peace. Give my family peace. No more tears. No more shame. No more bad news meeting bad news. No more heartbreak meeting heartbreak. Go ahead and pray. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. Peace in my business. Peace in my career. Peace in my pursuit. Peace in ministry. God made an end to war and fighting during the days of Solomon. He gave him rest in the days of Joshua. God gave them rest eventually round about. Someone pray, give me peace. 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 Peace in marriage. Peace over my health. Peace over the issues that trouble me. Peace over my finances. Now the God of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. 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 Always and by all means, always, and by all means. In Jesus' name we pray. The last prayer point before we pray over the request. Ushers, if you're yet to come, please make it fast. Let's, let's make it hasty. Um, if, if it doesn't have to be in the basket, even if it's by hand, just, just make it available and let's pray. We do this not as a ritual. But it's just a way to guide your faith so that you receive. Hallelujah. To guide your faith so that you receive. To guide your faith so that you receive. 
to guide your faith so that you receive. I'm sure we still have people outside. We'll give you a minute or two to just rush with your requests and bring it very quickly. Hallelujah. Final prayer. Father, turn around every negative situation in my life and my family. Turn it around. I came here with shame. Turn it around. I came here with legal cases. Turn it around. I came here with reproach. Someone pray. Open your mouth and pray. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. Go ahead. Father, turn every negative report, negative financial report, turn it around by your spirit. Turn again the captivity. I am your Zion. Turn again every captivity. Ministry captivity, financial captivity, marital captivity, career captivity, captivity in the area of establishment. Pray with faith, pray with fire, pray with expectation. Academic captivity, turn it around, oh God. Family captivity, turn it around, oh God. Give me a testimony. Let me rejoice. Let me rejoice. Come on, pray the prayer of Jonah. Jonah prayed when he was in the belly of the fish. Pray the prayer of Jonah that I will rejoice again in your salvation. Pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to speak over your life, but I want to pray over this request. We'll do it quickly and in one minute by faith. Go ahead. You need to bring it, just bring it quickly. Why do we pray over this request? Number one, because it is the most accurate representation of your desires. The Bible says, And whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, that you believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. This right here is a representation of your pain. This has made some of you cry. This has made some of you sick. This has made some of you weary. This has made some of you discouraged. Some of you, on account of the things you have written here, you came here discouraged, saying, Lord, I'm opening, let me just see if you can do something about my life. Yes, not just something, everything. God is able to step in and give you a testimony. I'm going to bow my knees in one minute whilst you're praying, connecting with me, and I will speak over this request as a point of contact. I'm going to ask the Lord to visit you, and then I'll rise and speak over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray. Father, visit me. Let every request here written be turned to a testimony. Every request here written, the Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. They looked unto him. Is someone praying? Is a believer praying? God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. When God speaks, it is within his power to bring his word to pass. This is a time for your personal petitions. Go ahead, lift your voice and cry. Father, hands have been laid on my request. In the name of Jesus Christ, raise the men who become answers to this request. Break the chains that make for answers to this request. Give me the ideas that make for answers to this request. Raise the helpers that will be used by you to answer this request. Lord, visit your people. Give them encounters. Give them testimonies. Make a name for yourself that they come out of financial captivities. Let marital spells be broken. Let academic lives rise, blossom, thrive again. Let ministries blossom. Let homes receive your salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
open up career doors by your spirit one more minute you are praying Shaliberento sodo plekete belekes rakata prateke peredekete belekatos. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I decree and declare as your servant upon this request. We do this not as a ritual, we do this full of faith, believing that you are the God that answers all prayer. I decree and declare. That in the name of Jesus, every request that has been penned down here, let it return to your people as testimonies. Let it return to your people as testimonies. Testimonies of helpers. Testimonies of new jobs. Testimonies of promotions. Miracle marriages. Miracle children. Liftings in the name of Jesus. Miracles of establishment. Miracles of deliverances, miracles of healing, miracles of advancement, miracles of restoration, miracles of overturning situations. I prophesy to you, you will laugh. Laughter to you. Laughter to you. And all who hear this will laugh with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands to receive. By the power that raised Christ from the dead I decree and declare the Lord brought you here for good he brought you here for laughter he brought you here for joy he brought you here for rising for victory for testimonies therefore I decree and declare every human agent anointed by God to step into your life step into your business this week and cause you to experience victory I declare that my God commands them to come on time my God commands them to come on time. Some of them will meet them tomorrow. They will be waiting for you. They will bless you. You will know they were sent by God to help you. In the name of Jesus. If there is anyone here who has sincerely taken a wrong direction towards your life, either by influences of friends and associations, demonic manipulations, we command a you turn back to the path of destiny. We command a you turn back to the path of destiny. We command a you turn back to the path of destiny. In the name of Jesus. And to deliver them who are appointed unto death. I pray for you. If your name has been written in the list of those who must die, between now and next month, I pray for you, by the blood of the eternal covenant, we clean your name from that list. We erase your name from that list. I speak to you, you shall not die. Believe it and receive it that you shall not die. Your children will not die. Your spouse will not die. Your parents will not die. They will live to a good old age. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here trusting God for career breakthrough. The battles have been around your career. No job or no good job or no increase, no advancement. I pray for you as we step into October in the name of Jesus. Let it be your month of miracles. Your month of miracles. Miracle jobs. Those you don't know will call you. They will connect you to help us in the name of Jesus I pray for anyone here who is in any kind of trouble legal trouble you are in debt you are owing you are in any kind of financial trouble by the voice of prophecy I pray for you in the name of Jesus as we step into this month October between now and the next and the end of October may my God do a quick miracle receive it the grace is coming on you a quick miracle in the name of jesus for someone even though your helpers are not in nigeria you don't need to go out to meet them god will connect you supernaturally god will connect you supernaturally i'm hearing this for someone god will connect you supernaturally in the name of jesus christ negative dreams negative experiences as you sleep 
you are even afraid of going to bed i decree and declare every antichrist anti-kingdom anti-advancement encounter i survey it from your life from tonight i survey it from your life from tonight while i was teaching i took time to teach extensively on value i'm praying for you now the anointing that makes your head shine so that your helpers and your lifters will see you i decree and declare may that grace rest on your head now you may not see it but your helpers will see it it will cause your face to shine in the name of jesus for some of us we entered this year fighting we are still fighting till now every month looks like a month of battles let me prophesy over you if you have the faith to receive it as you are entering october here is my prophecy for you rest round about rest round about rest round about let battles come to an end let victory be established hear it and receive it again rest round about rest round about in the name of Jesus three more prayer points let me declare restoration you lost relationships you lost opportunities either because of lack of discernment or because of some demonic thing you lost money you lost whatever it is I pray for you in this season how God will do it you don't need to know but I prophesy to you because you have been taken for a prey I come as a priest and I say restore 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 in the name of Jesus The Bible says a good name is to be desired than riches. Some of you have many other things except a good name. The devil has damaged your name and damaged your reputation. Hear me. Listen to my message, Redefining Inheritance. Among the many things that a good man leaves for his children is an inheritance. And the first of the inheritance is your convictions. The second inheritance you leave for your children are your relationships. The third inheritance you leave for your children is a good name. If you are great and your name is not great, only you will be successful. He told Abraham, I will bless you and I will make your name great. When your name is great, it becomes a key. Anyone who holds the key can open doors. It is a terrible thing to be great without your name being great. And it is not good enough for your name to be great while you are not great. When God wants to really make you great, he makes both you and your name great. If Joshua Selman is great and Koinonia is not great, I failed. If Koinonia is great and Joshua Selman is not great, I failed. When God wants to help men, he makes both you, your name, and you great. So that others can write through your name as a leverage and attain greatness. I'm praying for someone here every battle over your greatness and every battle over your name some of you you are great alone but people have to literally run away from a name you carry because that name is like a padlock it will close doors for them but i pray for you tonight by mercy both you and your name in this coming month you will taste of greatness you will taste of greatness you will taste of greatness I declare enjoy greatness by the spirit it says that will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side may my God increase your greatness and may you have a great name in the name of Jesus Christ my final prayer tonight is for your spiritual life some of you from January till now you are saying apostle I came here particularly because I am dying spiritually I have money I have a good job but it's at the expense of my spiritual life I want to pray for you let me tell you something sincerely miracle services are designed to help us encounter the power of God across various areas of our lives 
but in all you're getting if your prayer life is dead your word study life is dead your passion for God dead your character dead you did not receive much as I pray this prayer for your spiritual health I want you to receive it with all your heart whatever has destroyed your prayer life in the name of Jesus I pray for you now may it jack back to flames whatever has threatened your appetite for the word to study to hear to confess and to obey I decree and declare let that zeal and passion be restored for the world whatever has tampered with your appetite for the house of God I decree and declare let it be restored now every bad association around your life deviating you from the ways of God I break those relationships from your life in the name of Jesus I declare that you are spiritually minded I declare that you are spiritually vibrant you are loving Jesus with all your heart and you are experiencing victory as you seek him shout amen three times give Jesus a big hand clap celebrate his faithfulness tonight hallelujah Let me take out one minute from our time. Apologies have stretched us. I have to give someone an opportunity to make it right with Jesus before we end. You need Jesus. So many people are here tonight and they are saying, Apostle, even though we're out of time, give me an opportunity for Jesus. Let's be patient. We're finishing already. Be patient and allow those who need to honor this altar call. Wherever you are, as God has spoken to your heart, let's not have to drag and no, no, no. When it has to do with Jesus, you know when he tells you you need him. Wherever you are, in this auditorium, across the balconies, all the overflows, outside, in Zaria, and all our expressions. I'm going to count one to five. I want you to run literally. We're out of time. Leave your seats, my brother, my sister make your way to the front koinonia let's honor them don't allow us close this service when you know that you've not made it right with jesus come come Zuchiata na kane ya bona kane I don't know why the Holy Spirit has taken us to the north in this service today My heart belongs to you this is what you are saying and this is what you are doing if you are still coming join them quickly I want to pray for all those who are not able to make it inside, you'll be requested to just stand at your, pro your projector outside and then we'll make that very fast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making this noble decision for Jesus. Let me request that you lift your right hand if you can. Say this loud and clear after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I'm a child of God I go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for these precious people and the many who are following across the overflows following online across all our expressions they have come declaring your lordship over their lives and the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God that this decision will remain permanent in your life no going back 
no turning back. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, I'd like you to follow a gentleman, our counselors who are waving the placard. You will have a word with them and then they will pray with you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Please honor them as they go. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Have you been blessed tonight? Now, two things I want you to do for me. Number one, I want you to take the time. Take the time and listen this week. I will give you two teachings. Please settle down and listen to it this week. Hallelujah. Number one, complete deliverance. Please, everyone write it down. Pay attention. When God gives instructions like this, just take it. Complete deliverance. Listen to all the parts. You can find it on Koinonia Global. If you're not on any of our social media platforms, please know that um, we're available every day. It's open 24 hours. Go on YouTube and then complete deliverance. You'll get it on Koinonia Global. Please settle down where you can. You can just, just, just zoom it through your television and sit down quietly and listen to it with all your heart. Complete deliverance. Number two, the ministry of light. The ministry of light. The ministry of light. Please listen to these two teachings. Complete deliverance and then the ministry of light. Listen to it, pray it into your heart and watch what happens to your life. Rise up please, let's end the service. I want to thank you again, especially all of you who took the time coming from far. You will return with your testimonies for sure. In Jesus' name we pray. I declare that your week beginning is blessed. This week you will see the hand of God in a very mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Happy Independence during the week and then see you on Sunday. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. 
What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together. Thank you for watching. This video was created by Aledu Inalegu Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a content creator, a video editor, and a social media manager. To connect with him, send a DM now. God bless you.